So this is going to be a one-shot deal and a full playthrough of Streets of Rage 2. This is one of my favorite beat-em-up games of all time. We're just going to jump right into it. You got four characters, Max, Axel, Skate, and Blaze. I'm going to take Blaze and you're going to see an entire Let's Play, a whole playthrough of Streets of Rage 2. So throughout this game, we'll be talking a little bit about it as we go along. And then you're also going to see a little bit of everything that I have to show you here and just some of the tips and tricks that I use and I'll talk about some of that stuff as we go along. But I think the best thing that we can do is talk about beat-em-ups in general and talk about how Streets of Rage has impacted the beat-em-up genre and why we don't see any more of these games or if they're not as common going forward. So with the first Streets of Rage, I believe it came out in like 89 or 90 it was either at the very end of the 80s or right at the beginning of the early 90s was the first Streets of Rage. And within that you also had Final Fight on the Super Nintendo just shortly after that but with Streets of Rage it brought something for the Sega Genesis that it hasn't had. You had a beat em up but you had just some really great music because before that you had some beat em ups like Double Dragon and River City Ransom. I'll get into a little bit of that as we go forward too. But for the Sega Genesis, it was one of the first ones where you could say, hey, this game has some awesome music in Streets of Rage, but, you know, it has some foundations to build upon. You got three characters in that game with Axel, Blaze that you see here. They look a little bit different and they perform a little bit differently. And then Adam, which was Skate's older brother. The only time you get to play as Adam was the first Streets of Rage. So, talking about that game, had some great music. And it was just the first opportunity for me because I was born in 87, so I was pretty young when I ended up playing the game, like about 4 or 5 when I first played the game. And basically what I remember from it is just trying to pick up weapons and beat the crap out of the enemies and just have fun with it. It wasn't one of those games that I particularly got very good at at the very beginning, but it's one of the ones that I like to play over and over again. Funny story that I have with you because we don't have a lot of these... Uh, Blockbuster videos, a lot of these video rental places here, especially in Michigan, all I think you really have is uh, family video. Let me know if there's still some video rental places or if you guys are stuck using Redbox and stuff like that. But I remember I was at Blockbuster one time and I tried to get the first Streets of Rage. And it was quite funny because I went up there at least like 20, 30 times because it was one of the ones, it was my home base pretty much. It was right by where I lived. And the other Streets of Rage, especially two at the time, I don't think three was out, but the other ones were available. And I wanted to play the first one before, you know, I ended up playing the other games in the series because that's just something I wanted to start. And after a while, I noticed like four or five, six times in a row that the game was never in after, you know, you I think you get to rent it for a week or five days or something like that, however it used to be. And I went up to the guy or whoever was there and I said, this game is never in, you know, is this ever going to come back in and uh, is there any way to get this game in? And little did I know, you know, I think a lot of you guys might know about this more than I would, especially I was a young kid, but the guy told me to wait for 45 minutes after a while after I kept asking about it when I go up there and they made a copy of the game and then they said I could rent it. So behind the back scenes or whatever they have, maybe those dirty movies or some of that stuff and uh, the old rental places, they made a copy of Streets of Rage for me so I could actually play it and start with the first game, which I thought was pretty cool. I didn't know that they could do that stuff back then. So I ended up playing the game for the first time, like I said, I wanted to try to beat up the enemies. I wasn't very good at it. I did like the fact that you could use the A button on the Genesis controller to summon the police, and that was your special, not like the... Uh, Ryu type move that Blaze uses to, you know, the Shuriken thing, whatever, the Hadouken, all that stuff. That's that's what kind of what she uses. But in Streets of Rage, you, in the first one especially, you just summon the cops in order to just do some damage to a ton of enemies on the screen, or especially the final boss of that stage, in order to get to what you needed to do, so you could save some of your health to conserve everything. So it was a pretty neat game, and then there was also a cool twist. Like if you had, uh, you remember Double Dragon on the regular Nintendo, especially if you played it in the arcades, it was a little bit different from playing on the regular Nintendo, that if you got to the very end, I think if you were Billy Lee, you could fight Jimmy or vice versa in order to compete and see who would win the girlfriend. I, I think her name was Marion, if I remember correctly. 
But that was one of those similar type twists. If you're playing a two-player game in Streets of Rage, you could fight with Mr. X and see who was the best. You would fight amongst yourselves, and then the winner would be Mr. X's uh, right-hand man or woman, if you're Blaze. And that was pretty much the way that it worked. Or if you were one player and you decided to say no, he would send you back to stage six and you'd have to start all over again. So, I didn't think it was the greatest game in the world, but I definitely thought that, you know, it was, it was cool and it had some great music. And going forward, uh, Streets of Rage was in good hands, because this is the end of stage one here. You pretty much you got the boss here, uh, Barbin. And if you, if you don't know... Because I really didn't know this, I wasn't sure how I used to be able to do it, but if you always want to land on your feet, hold up and B on the controller, and it will allow you to land on your feet when you get thrown. So it also helps you against this guy and the ninjas and some of the stuff that you'll face. So, a couple of years later, I believe, what, 92? I want to say this game came out, you can double check in the credits at the very beginning, that uh, Streets of Rage 2 comes out. And you feel from art style and direction, that Streets of Rage 2, you know, has the humble beginnings from the first one, but the overall look and feel of the health bars, the actual special that you get, you see me spamming against because I picked up the, the turkey or the chicken or whatever you want to call it to get full health, that, you know, some of that stuff had changed. And uh, the time meter and all that stuff was still there, but the special moves have changed. You know, you add another character. And what I really like about this game especially is the great music also continues. But a lot of the gameplay mechanics have just been refined to what you're used to. Especially when you get into the third and final sequel. And I'll talk about some of the other stuff going forward. That the moves and everything else, you have your basic combo with the B. You could jump with the C button, you have special with A. If you don't land your special, when you just press A, you do like the backflip with Blaze. If you don't land, you can spam it in order to get guys off of you. But once you land, it takes some of your health away. And then you have just backwards throws, you have jump move throws, you have to be able to land on your feet, you can uh, attack from side to side, and some different things like that. Streets of Rage 2 turned out to, I would say, and I, my six or eight year old self would say at the time, that I wasn't sure if this was my favorite game in the series, but now being 28, I can pretty much tell you that this is my favorite game in the series. I do like some instances in Streets of Rage 3 and we'll go forward and talk about that a little bit more but this is my favorite game in the series because overall it has the best music has the best stage design I like the way that you have the weapon that you can keep the weapon in your hand until it falls you know a few more times and then you end up losing it there's more varieties of, of weapons that you can use and it's just it overall it plays very well and the look and feel of it is I would say utter perfection because there's really only one other beat em up that I can think of that holds the test of time and holds a candle in terms of Streets of Rage, and we'll talk about that as well. So, throughout this game and throughout this Let's Play, I'll also talk about some of the other stage designs, some of my favorite moves, and some hidden one ups and stuff at the very beginning of the uh, stage or the first one that you saw. If you just move to the left a little bit you can get a one-up you can also get a one-up in this stage as well because right after you get past the truck here and kill some enemies you go right behind and grab the one-up and you have another one that's the second one of the three that you can find if there is any other ones let me know because I kind of forget some of the other tips and tricks it's been a while since I played this game but this game has been in my rotation for a long time and I have played it a lot it's just been probably about six to eight months since I played it last. So a couple of years later I believe, I would say 93, 94, Streets of Rage 3 comes out. In this game there is a lot more to talk about in terms of just what the hell everybody was thinking. This is where you can pick up the one up by the way. I'll show you, just go all the way up in the truck and grab it there and it makes the sound. The Streets of Rage 3 was a really weird game and I would say it's weird because just some of the stage design, some of the music, again the, the same music composer comes in and for Streets of Rage 3 and I don't know if it's just the lack of the sound chips or whatever that's on the Sega Genesis because everything always sounds like a, a rock guitar 
compared to, you know, like with bad synthesis compared to what you get with the Super Nintendo and the superior sound chip and all of that. But the game was just really crazy. The one thing that you liked about the game, I would say, even though I'm pretty sure if you were to poll everybody in terms of Streets Rage 2 and 3, I think a lot of them would tell you that 2 was their favorite. That with 3, you had a lot of extra moves. And you also had the implement of the 6 button controller because there was a lot of extra combos and stuff that you could do. You could do special moves with the with the weapons. Like when you run with, when you do a forward forward jump with Blaze, you'll do a uh, like blue dolphin type kick. Well, you can do like some of the special moves with Blaze with the sword, where she would just like glow, and then it would do some damage and stuff like that. And then there was also an instance where your meter would fill up where the time bar is right now in Streets of Rage 2, and when it fills up and says OK, you're able to use your special move without uh, losing any of your health. So there's some different things like that and some better combos. I would say I liked on Streets of Rage 3, but I thought the game was very bizarre. And you wouldn't know how bizarre it was compared to playing the US version if you played the Japanese version. Because there was a few different enemies in there. With uh, Streets of Rage 3, you had Shiva. Shiva was the end boss of Streets of Rage 2, which you'll end up seeing, that you could play as if you had a Game Genie. Just like for the regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis all had Game Genie and you could get some other codes. I believe also if you had the United States version and you had Game Genie, you could use Ash. Ash was a gay playable character that you could use in the Japanese version of Streets of Rage. And if you have the Xbox 360 version of the Streets of Rage collection or the PlayStation version I believe you could play the Japanese version of the ROM correct me if I'm wrong if you could do that on the Sega Ultimate Genesis collection I'm not quite sure because that's what I own the this game on the Streets of Rage collection all that stuff I have the Sega Ultimate Genesis collection Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection and I'm using the emulator right now to get the footage to, to go ahead and show you guys for the Streets of Rage 2 let's play but with that game you could play as Ash and if you die, you end up screaming like Blaze. You do some like questionable movements. When you end up fighting Ash, you have some of the music, like just some of the bizarre music. And it was taken out of the game because it thought it was just too weird. And that kids would think it's, and parents would think it's just a little bit ridiculous. So they took it out of the game. When you, th when you think about stuff like that now, and you have games like Grand Theft Auto V or just some other things, I remember when I first played The Getaway on PS2, and that was one of those Grand Theft Auto type clones, and it said the word fuck on an actual uh, game, like for the first time on PS2, then you end up figuring that was commonplace, but that was like when I was, I don't know, I want to say like 15, 17, something like that. They end up figuring that was commonplace. If you end up watching some of the videos on uh, Cinemassacre with, uh, James and Mike, you end up finding one of those funny videos where a Nintendo game on the Famicom actually says the word fuck. But I'll show you, I'll give you some links in terms of all that stuff too, and some of the beam ups that they played, because I want to mention Double Dragon as well, as we get going forward on this series for other beat em ups you should play. So, Streets of Rage 3 was crazy, and there was only a couple other things I wanted to mention about it, was the United States version of Streets of Rage 3 was really made extra difficult on accident and I think it was when they were making the game itself they accidentally went one level up on the difficulty so normal was hard and hard was ridiculous and all that stuff there's extra difficulties that you can uh, access on Streets of Rage 2 if you have a a second player moving their controller you can move and play Mania difficulty and all that stuff just like on Streets of Rage but Streets of Rage 3 was pretty difficult on the US version especially if you played on the hard difficulty because I was extreme I was able to get through hard I believe after a while but it certainly it took me a while because that game was just really different and it was kinda bizarre so in here we're gonna be getting through already Damn, I've been talking for quite a while. <laughs> this will be the third stage. I'm going to be getting to about the halfway point here. You'll be able to pick up another one-up pretty soon throughout here. 
And let's take a break from the synopsis of Streets of Rage for a little while. And uh, I want to ask you guys, facebook.com slash or Twitter at John Ryan Ott. Thank you guys for watching if you're still sticking around so far. I was thinking about making this a live uh, stream on YouTube, but I'm not exactly sure because I'm using the PlayStation 3 i camera and I put it through my computer. I was able to put a couple of mods in there or whatever the driver was to be able to use that. So I can also use it for Skype and some other things like that. If you ever want to get at me on Skype, whatever, let me know too. I can throw that in there. Any information is available upon request if you ever want to know if you want to collaborate or talk or whatever I mentioned that in my YouTube channel I'm trying to build more content in it and this is one of my favorite games I figured starting with the old school classics would make a lot of sense but if you ever want to talk on Skype or any of that kind of stuff or get some other ideas or you just want to tell me to go fuck myself you know that's fine too but I, th I think this game is a lot of fun and uh, some of the other stuff I was thinking about doing a live stream on this because this game is just so good. You know, I, I played it for a while. I think a lot of people will just enjoy watching somebody else play Streets of Rage. I'm sure a lot of people have a ton of videos on YouTube about this, but this is just a classic game that you, you can't go wrong with. But the question I want to throw out to you is, what are some of your favorite old school beat em ups? What do you think about the beat em up genre? And do you see anything going forward that beat-em-ups are going to return? Because I think the only thing that I remember basically hearing about from the last, I want to say, this is 2015, probably 2011, 2012, was the uh, Double Dragon Neon games. I'm not exactly sure when they came out. You can go ahead and uh, leave a comment in the comment box. Let me know if you figure that out. That's that was the last I ever heard of these beat 'em up games. Or if you have the uh, Yakuza series, I know Alpha Omega Sin is pretty big into that series. The extra one up is right in the middle of the swinging thing, by the way. That Alpha Omega Sin is pretty much into the Yakuza series. I've never actually played them myself, so I heard that a new he's talking about a new Yakuza was coming out. I'm gonna have to check it out because I've, I've never played it before. I've only really played Streets of Rage. I played Double Dragon on the regular Nintendo. I played a garbage version of Double Dragon. I think the Sacred Stones on the Sega Genesis. I never played Double Dragon 3 Sacred Stones on Nintendo. And then uh, Final Fight. And I know a lot of people like Final Fight. And I'm not going to dog you if you do. But after playing Streets of Rage, because I played that first. I, I owned a Sega Genesis. When I was, when I was born in 87... When I got a regular Nintendo when I was a kid, I just had Super Mario Brothers and all that. I didn't really have any of the other games. I kind of wish I was a little bit older, like one of my other cousins were, when he had a ton of uh, Nintendo games. He had uh, Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy, the other RPGs that I always wish that I had. Looking back on that now, I wish I had a regular Nintendo collection. I really don't have anything for that game, to be honest. Besides, so like, Double Dragon 2 and... Uh, Super Mario and a couple other games. I have a pretty piss poor regular Nintendo collection. And that's one of my regrets that I always wish I would have had a better one to get some of my other games that I really liked. You know, I, I wouldn't have known that stuff at the time because I was one of those dumbass kids that always got those Tiger Electronic games <laughs> instead of getting a, a Nintendo game, which was really stupid. And then when my uh, one of my grandmothers bought me a Game Boy when I was a kid, I didn't really have a lot of Game Boy games either. And there was a ton of good Game Boy games. There was Final Fantasies, Castlevanias, stuff like that. There was Super Mario Land. You know, just a, a ton of good games like that. Maybe we'll get into some of those as we go forward on this channel. But one of my regrets that I always have is, you know, not having a be better Nintendo collection. You know, not being able to play some of those beat-em-ups at the time on the regular Nintendo because I played Double Dragon 2 a little bit and I'd, I'd beat that and enjoyed it but I never really got to play River City Ransom honestly I didn't know anything about that I ended up playing River City Ransom for the first time uh, not on the Nintendo but the Game Boy Advance and I absolutely fucking love that game that's one of the best beat em up games of all time I have to agree with Alpha Omega Sin here. If I have to pick it up against uh, Streets of Rage, you, you might have a hard time of me saying otherwise, but I really love uh, River City Ransom, and that was one of my favorite beat-em-ups. 
I talk about Final Fight, like I said, I'm not going to dog on you guys that actually like it, but when I'm playing this game, and I played Final Fight, I didn't really want to play Final Fight anymore after I played like two or three stages of it. I just didn't see the appeal. Yeah, I, I give Capcom credit for uh, making Final Fight and having fun with it. I believe that Final Fight was supposed to be a uh, Street Fighter uh, remake, like Street Fighter 89 or something like that, but it ended up being its own franchise. So what other beat em up games have you guys played? What other old school games do you enjoy? Do you miss Streets of Rage? Do you miss the fact that Sega has not gone out and made a uh, remake on their standards of any of these games? Or uh, just giving you a brand new Streets of Rage? Because I think it's about damn time. I mean, it's what well, it's only been about 20 years, over 20 years. I mean, haven't, haven't seen one. I think there was a uh, short rumor about Streets of Rage in terms of it being made in Streets of Rage 4, and I thought that it was to be talked about in terms of the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 at the time. I could be wrong, it might have been uh, PlayStation or 64 or something like that, but I thought that there was rumors of it coming out and it just never materialized. Throughout this video, if you like Streets of Rage and all that stuff, and I try to talk a little bit about the synopsis of it, try to get some other things to talk about to keep you guys entertained as you're watching some of this gameplay. I do happen, and I did happen, to play the Streets of Rage fan remake. If you've never heard of that, by all means, minimize the video and go to the annotation or whatever I'll have it in the comment box below. I won't leave an annotation, it'd bother you. But I'll put in the comment box the link for the Streets of Rage fan remake by Bomber Games. I believe Sega, the company, was trying to get these guys to take this off of the internet, to not have the actual game itself. I believe that it's all still there to download. I found the link, I will give that to you guys in the description. If you know anything basic to be able to just put a program on your computer and go ahead and play it, and if you have a uh, Xbox 360 wired controller or any controller of your choosing, you can hook it up or you can use a uh, program called Joy to Key so you can go ahead and get a controller instead of playing on the keyboard that you can play the Streets of Rage remake. And I think the Streets of Rage remake is very well done. Sega has never given us the sequel that we wholeheartedly deserve. But I think that it's a game that, if it was to be called Streets of Rage 4, it would be all that and then some. Because you beat the game, you get some money, you get some currency, there is a shop system with Blaze. Please do not try to play the game in the middle of the night, go into the shop system and steal from Blaze. Because you will never be able to access the shop again to get the other goodies like the hidden characters and all that stuff. You might as well just uninstall the game and install it back if you're going to do something like that. But what the Streets of Rage remake did was incorporate one of the things from Final Fight is when some items fell out of an enemy such as like a hamburger or some items that you could pick up to get more money to inflate your score. It would also give you more money for the shop and it would be there as well. Then you had things like the barrels that you break to get the money bags or the gold bars that they would actually explode. Or you could take some of the systems that were implemented in Streets of Rage 3 such as the OK to use special bar. Or if you, by God, if you wanted to have your weapons have a stamina meter on them so you couldn't span them all day. Or if you wanted to have the time meter on. Or if you didn't want to have the time meter on, if you want to be able to roll, if you wanted to see blood, if you wanted to add guns, if you wanted to have, and what I like about this in some of these stages, especially, uh, I believe, Golden Axe, or Turtles in Time, or some of these games that had multiple branching paths in your fighting games, you had multiple branching paths in Streets of Rage. And pretty much what the remake did was chronicled, you know, all the stages from the first three Streets of Rage have multiple branching paths and then add multiple uh, new areas to go to and traverse, new move sets, bring back all the characters such as Adam and everybody else, but give them running moves 
give them running animations, rolling animations, all the other stuff, all the stuff that you've come to experience in all the Streets of Rage are all brought into one giant package and it's absolutely incredible and you really gotta like it and I have to go ahead and click something because my computer's trying to give me an update here as I'm recording this man okay so you had all of that stuff in there and it was absolutely great and it's one of the best fan-made projects I've ever seen. I've, I'd beaten the remake several times. You can play it on pretty much a ton of different difficulties. You can play two players. You, you can even have a CPU friend. So if you want to have two players and you're playing by yourself, you can use the CPU to go ahead and get past all that stuff. So it is really great. It's one of the best projects I've ever seen. One of the best fan-made things I've ever seen. I would definitely say that if you're going to rate it in terms of an unofficial Streets of Rage rating, that that would be the best in the series. But we're going to stick with the first three games in terms of what I just talked about. That I think that Streets of Rage 2 I, gets the edge for me in terms of the best game in the series. Because it has the best music. It chronicles all the stuff where you want to have you know, all of your movesets. Everything else that you're accustomed to of what Streets of Rage was built was all built into this foundation of the second game. That's why I go ahead and say that this is the best game in the series. I do like elements of Streets of Rage 3. I'm not one of those guys that sit there and blast the game because I know that there's a few of you out there that absolutely hate Streets of Rage 3. I don't, I don't think that way. I really like a lot of elements in Streets of Rage 3 and I think the remake, essentially the fan-made project incorporates a lot of the elements that I loved in 3 and some of the stuff that I liked in 2 and puts it all in the one complete package and makes an absolutely fantastic fantastic series so facebook.com slash tbugunslinger twitter at John Ryan Ott. what are some of your favorite beat em ups of all time and what is your favorite game in the Streets of Rage series Sorry, taking a little bit of a drink break there. Get my voice. Gets a little bit more hoarse. You know, I do a lot of the play-by-plays and stuff like that for the NBA. But trying to talk throughout this whole thing, you know, is a little bit difficult. And if I had a live stream going, I could try to interact with you in some of these comments. I think I'd want to do that going forward. Because not only I wouldn't have to talk as much, I don't have to sit here and hear me, hear me talk over and over again. But just be able to interact with you. If I get enough people and get enough videos, I want to start doing that. Because some of the other stuff that I have going forward in the series, and this is only the second video, because like I said, I had to remake the account. That in uh, September, we're going to be launching the EA Sports Hockey League again with Electronic Arts. Finally, they're bringing it back for all of us uh, hockey fans. Then I'm going to get you a EA SHL Seasons uh, show and show some tips and tricks and all that stuff as well. Because you know, it's just something that I really like playing, and it's something that hopefully I can show you, maybe get you guys interested in. Not necessarily agreeing with everything that uh, EA has done, but it's finally good to be able to play that series, especially and played it in two years. NHL 15 was absolutely garbage. So look forward to that coming up on the channel in uh, September. I believe the game launches the second Tuesday in September, whatever that is, whether it be 10, 10th or 12th or something like that, whatever that Tuesday falls on, that's when that game will come out, and then I'll be using the uh, PlayStation 4 and Share Factory to go ahead and get you some of those videos and let you know what I think. Hopefully they have a creation zone in that game, because I'll be able to go ahead and talk about some of the tips and tricks that I use and refine my shot and some of the other things. So that'll be something to look forward to on the channel. In terms of uh, RPGs and other old school games that I also want to talk about going forward, I really like Shining Force on the Sega Genesis. I was one of those ones that you either had a Super Nintendo or a Sega Genesis, and looking back on it when I was a kid, I also got the uh, Sega Genesis as a gift. I think it had to have been, God, I can't remember when the Sega came out. It might have came out in like 89 and then Sonic the Hedgehog launched I think in like 90 or something like that so I would have been about four years old 
and Sega was one of those things that I kind of grew up into a little bit. It really wasn't necessarily my first system. I'll talk about that a little bit going forward in this video. But Sega and RPGs and all that, Sega really wasn't one of those systems that had RPGs. When I played games over my cousin's house, talk about that before, where I played Zelda and Dragon Warrior and Final Fantasy and some of those other games, when I looked at Sega, I never really had those opportunities. You had uh, Tales of Century, and I, I think that's what it was called, and a couple other games, and then you had Shining Force and Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star was a little bit crazy for my tastes. I really didn't like it that much. I know that there was a lot of people that love Fantasy Star. I like Fantasy Star 4. That was about it. You know, that's pretty much all I liked on there. But the one series that I did love was Shining Force, especially Shining Force 2 on the Sega Genesis. I think that might be um, one of the next games that I go after in terms of the old school series. That's definitely not going to be an entire Let's Play because it'll just be way too long. Probably give you the first uh, few battles and all of that and just let you know what I think about the game overall, thoughts and opinions and all of that. But that'll be something to look forward to as well because I absolutely love that game and I really would want to have a chance to talk more about it. But if it definitely if I have any regrets in terms of the Sega and Super Nintendo era, <laughs> that would be the fact that I didn't have better Sega Genesis games. I pretty much had, let me think about it, Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles. I didn't even have Sonic 2. So I had Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles, uh, Shining Force 2, NHL 97, trying to think of some of the other games that I played. I only really had like 10 or 15 I didn't have a lot of games. And I don't know why my collection was uh, so shitty, but I think pretty much if I had to really pinpoint it, it was the fact that when I first grew up, especially with that, we didn't. I didn't have a lot of money while I was with uh, my mom and dad, so they pretty much had to just scrap to give me whatever they were going to give me in terms of all that stuff, and I always appreciated it, but when I look back on it, you know, I wish I was a little bit older to be able to afford myself some of these other games. You know, looking through these Sega Visions magazines, some of the old ones that I had, and I would see the fact that Shining Force and all these other games would be like $65, $70 if you wanted to order them. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I think back then you had Funko Land and stuff like that, and I didn't really have any of those by me. And pretty much when you don't have the internet and stuff like that back then, you really don't know what games are good in terms of any of the stuff that you see in the magazine, and that's about it. So, I never really had a good collection. But my cousin had a Nintendo, and then with Super Nintendo he had games like uh, Super Mario World, uh, Link to the Past, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Super Ninja Boy. I think he had uh, Super Ninja Boy from Family Video or whatever one of those retailers be able to uh, rent games. And I think there was a story where <laughs> he had the game in his collection for like seven months and he never took it back and they tried to go ahead and uh, bill him for it. But I, I don't know what ended up happening with that. I don't think he ever got billed for it. He made up an excuse and said that he lost it. So we had uh, Super Ninja Boy by Culture Brain for a really long time. And then some of those other games like Super Punch-Out, uh, Final Fantasy 3, I think it was because it wasn't 6, because we didn't have that in the States. He had a lot of good Super Nintendo games. So when I went over there, I was always jonesing at the bit to play some of that, and for whatever reason, he was always jonesing at the bit to play NHL 97 and Shining Force 2 and some of the other games like that. I remember back in the day, especially with uh, Sega, like this is one of the games that I played a lot. He played uh, Fatal Labyrinth. That was one of the other uh, RPG games where I had like a hundred floors, and that was a little bit uh, ridiculous. That was a game that was also on the Sonic Ultimate Genesis collection with the Streets of Rage and all that too, and Shining Force and some of the other stuff, Fantasy Star. That uh, that game had a hundred floors and it was absolutely a ridiculous RPG. I thought it was a little bit monotonous, but with Shining Force, it was one of those games that I would think, if you like strategy RPGs, it was one of those ones that kind of changed your life at the time because it brings into gameplay into account that you have your force of 12 
they all play like your individual characters. You have your healer, you have your warrior, your mage, your priest, you have your in-between, you have wolf, you have like, all these other different kind of characters with all these different strengths and weaknesses. And it was absolutely great. And if it's another Sega franchise, we're talking about Sega franchises with Streets of Rage, another Sega franchise that deserves a damn sequel. Streets of Rage. I mean, where where is all that stuff? Fantasy Star, you know, they, it has a lot of that. We're almost in stage six now. Stage eight will be the final stage, and then I will be able to save my voice. <laughs> Sega, talk about franchises and lost opportunities. Facebook.com slash to be a gunslinger, Twitter at John Ryan Ah. That Shining Force, I think, is one of them. Fantasy Star is one of them. Streets of Rage is one of them. Sega had a lot of good. Uh, franchises at the time that they haven't really done a lot with lately and you know it's one of these companies that Sega now if you look from their perspective they don't really make games anymore they uh, you know they had the Sega Genesis the Sega Master System before that the Sega CD which absolutely flopped the Sega 32X all of that stuff was garbage and then when the Sega Saturn came out unfortunately for the Sega Saturn you know, it had to deal with the Sony PlayStation, and it didn't end up uh, lasting too long. I thought the Sega Saturn was absolutely great. I had some lot of good games. I love the controller. Love Sega Saturn, but I didn't have one of those. But Shining Force Three, you know, since I didn't have one of those, I was never able to play it. And I really didn't know a lot of people that had a Sega Saturn or had, you know, a lot of games back then that were fitting the bill in terms of everything that you had, in terms of the collection, in terms of all the good games that were there. You know, it was just, you had this system, you had to pay the extra money for the RAM cart, you had to pay the extra money for this and that. Sega Saturn and a lot of the games, especially Shining Force 3, I believe, came out at the very end of its life cycle, and that was it. You know, you had PlayStation. I got a PlayStation in 1997. I was 10 years old. By then, you know, I played Shining Force and some of these other RPGs. I got into Final Fantasy VII, and that was it. You know, that would be another game we could talk about on the old school classic series that I've gone as we're trying to build some of these videos. Pretty much at that time, talking about regrets I had before with the regular Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, I didn't really have any regrets because at that time I pretty much have like the most monstrous PlayStation collection that you could ever have. Honestly, I'd like to go on eBay sometime and see how much any of that stuff is worth because I have like Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, Parasite Eve, Brave Fencer Musashi, uh, you know, all those other RPGs, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, Saga Frontier, all those other games like that. Uh, a lot of uh, some action games that I like, Quake 2, you know. Just, I have a lot of different PlayStation games, a lot of them that I can't mention off the top of my head. But some of those RPGs that I used to play all the time, I don't have any regrets when it comes to that. But the PlayStation, or the PlayStation 2 especially, or the GameCube, and then getting into the future, I think that that was probably the last good gaming generation that we had, was the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube. Because I really didn't like the Xbox 360, and as much as I like PlayStation, owning a PlayStation and PlayStation 2, I didn't really like PlayStation 3 all that much. And it's just one of those things now when you look back at it, in terms of especially if you're watching this from the old school classics, I know this is only the second video, we you talk about some of the things that made some of these old school games special. Always having to be online all the time. Always having to be online in order to play with your friends. No split screen. None of that kind of stuff like that. There's some of these other games. No RPGs. They don't make those anymore because a lot of Western gamers... North America, stuff like that, they don't like these Japanese RPGs, and they really don't have a place. And I think it, it kind of sucks. There's some of these beat em ups, a lot of that stuff, they don't have enough substance, you know, they don't make a lot of these. I think beat em ups are great. And a lot of these old school beat em ups haven't been able to get remade. And when they try to make them, I haven't really played the Yakuza series, so I can't really comment about it. But all the other ones, when you think about Double Dragon Neon, what did you guys think of that game? I didn't know if it was that good or not. Now, I haven't really heard a lot about the beat em up genre with all of these uh, new consoles with the 360, PS3, PS4, Xbox One. These generations, are these beat em up genres ever going to make a comeback? I'm not quite sure. <clears throat> so, Facebook.com slash TBU Gunslinger Twitter. 
Adron Ryanot. You're watching the Let's Play of Streets of Rage 2. You're getting my thoughts and opinions of Streets of Rage 2, and we talk about a lot of topics in general in terms of your video game collections from regular Nintendo, Sega Genesis days, Sega Master System, Super Nintendo, all of that stuff, PlayStation, Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 2, GameCube, any of that. What are your uh, favorite games that you have in your collection? Another question I throw out to you. What are your favorite games of the beat em up genre? What are your favorite games of all time? Do you hate the fact that you can't play split screen anymore? You can't play with friends in the same room that you always have to be online with a headset? It's one of my pet peeves. I like being able to play with a lot of my friends that I normally wouldn't get to play with, but at the same time, I want the damn option for the split screen. There's two stages left. I got a little bit more of this Kool-Aid jammers, this cherry Kool-Aid jammers down my throat with the Kool-Aid man <laughs> from Family Guy. So, oh yeah! Uh, trying to save my voice a little bit. <clears throat> what are you thinking of the game so far? I'm not an expert. Of uh, I played this game a lot, you know. Maybe I would uh, quantify as an expert because I played it countless times. But I do die a lot, and especially I died a little bit on this stage more than I was used to. And then I died a crap ton on the final stage, but I was able to get with the same amount of lives that I ended up started with, so that was nice. This is just playing straight up on the normal difficulty. Pretty much, if I was going to go ahead and make this video, I got this. I believe just under an hour, like 55 minutes or something like that, and hopefully it lets me upload the entire thing on YouTube. That if I played on Mania or some of these other difficulties, all you would be doing is seeing me pressing the punch button more and more and more because these guys all have, especially the normal enemies, all have a whole full bar of health. So, you know, to not do that as much and to keep this video a little bit timely, just play on the normal difficulty here, just seeing what you would see and uh, get this underneath an hour and just enjoy it and uh, talk about especially all the Streets of Rage that we talked about and you know some of these other beat-em-ups and since we'll be getting toward the end of this video pretty soon because this is second to the last stage I wanted to mention just a couple other things the other beat-em-ups in the series especially not only Streets of Rage but we're talking about River City Ransom, Final Fight Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all of that. Some of my other beat em up memories. And what are some of yours? Facebook.com slash Tribute Gunsinger, Twitter at John Ryan Ott. When I had the regular Nintendo, I believe I did have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. And I think that, that was an, a pretty good port on the regular Nintendo of the actual arcade game. I believe I played that quite a few times. And especially Turtles in Time got a pretty funny story about that. Because when I used to live in uh, Roseville, Michigan, there was a bowling alley not too far from where I used to live with uh, a few of my cousins back when I went to elementary school. That they would go and they would bowl, and I would like get one of those little booster seat things, and I would sit down and I would play uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. And what I used to do when nobody, <laughs> when nobody was looking, after I would run out of continues, or I, you know, I got so good at the first stage because I would unplug the machine and plug it back in so I could get a few free credits so I wouldn't have to keep playing uh, putting quarters in so I would get so good at the first couple stages that I could end up playing for a while while they were all bowling so you know I had a, a fun time with that and then when the game actually got ported to the Super Nintendo in Turtles in Time it was one of the best ports of all time and I would say only in terms of Streets of Rage that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo, especially in the arcade where it couldn't be beat for, for the Super Nintendo, that is the only beat em up in my opinion that comes close or is even better than Streets of Rage. And a lot of people have played, uh, I believe it's called Dungeons and Dragons Shadow over Mystaria. I never got to play that, I heard that was an awesome beat em up as well. The one I really like is, um,. God, I can't think of the name now. I'm going to be mad me blanking on the name for the uh, Sega Saturn. I believe it was Guardian Heroes. I played the crap out of that, and I really liked it. 
that was one of those things that had one of those 3D planes that you could jump across. But that one did have branching paths and some other things like that. So I would definitely, I'm pretty sure all of you guys have played uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. You can go ahead and get that stuff anywhere in terms of, I'm pretty sure Steam or the Xbox 360, any of those Xbox arcade games. The one thing that I did like about 360, even though I didn't really like that generation that much, was if you had those classic arcade games, you could pretty much buy all of those and all of that stuff was there. So Turtles in Time was definitely there. Streets of Rage was there, Golden Axe Collection was there, I recommend checking that out. But Turtles in Time and Streets of Rage are uh, some of my favorite beat-em-ups of all time. And uh, Guardian Heroes for the Sega Saturn, I would definitely think is third on that list. And I would tie uh, Turtles in Time and Streets of Rage for my favorites. Maybe if I want to put two in over Guardian Heroes, it might be River City Ransom. Because when I played that on the Game Boy Advance, never played the regular Nintendo version, but you can go ahead and um, play and go through the stores throughout the game and get like powered up and get a, a passcode system to continue to go ahead and fight, I believe, something similar to the Double Dragon Twins throughout the game. And uh, you know, it was kind of an RPG uh, slash beat em up, and it was pretty cool, and it was made by... The same people that made Nintendo World Cup Soccer, who was it, Tecmos? Something like that. They had a lot of different kind of games. A lot of these games, when you look back on it in terms of their mannerisms, might be a little bit suspect now in today's time, but all those games were great, and they all had a lot of uh, fun and amusement to them. So definitely recommend those. And for you modern gamers out there, I think there was a game that I played a little bit on the Xbox 360. I never beat it. Remember that movie, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? I never really know what you thought about the movie, necessarily, but there was a game made out of it, and it was a beat-em-up game, and it was kind of styled like Streets of Rage and River City Ransom. That was a pretty cool game, if I remember correctly. So, I would definitely check that out as well. And the other things that I would do, I would also try uh, Double Dragon on the regular Nintendo, you can definitely get all of that stuff on the Xbox Live Arcade as well. Try Double Dragon. I think Double Dragon 2 is my favorite in the series. That's one of those must plays. Double Dragon I think is pretty good. I would stay away from Double Dragon 3 on the World Nintendo. I think that game is absolute ass. But especially the one on the Sega. That's the one I actually... I think somebody bought me that from Funko Land for like $3. And I was... You know, I played it, but I always hated it. <laughs> it was something to play, but... You know, it's not one of those things that I would recommend you doing over and over again. Golden Axe on the Sega Genesis, like I said, that's there. Uh, I recommend checking it out. Probably Golden Axe 1 is my favorite. Golden Axe 3 is kind of weird. Kind of how Streets of Rage 3 is kind of weird, but it doesn't really... It's not that great. Final Fight, it's one of those things. You either really like Streets of Rage or you really like Final Fight. I'm one of those on the other side that I love Streets of Rage. But, you know, I'd still recommend trying Double Dragon, Golden Axe, and Final Fight. And I wholeheartedly recommend and love uh, Streets of Rage, Turtles in Time, and uh, Guardian Heroes. In the Sega Genesis, if you're looking for another Turtles game in terms of some of the stuff on uh, Turtles 1 through 3, there was a video made on Cinemassacre, one of uh, James' videos for the first Turtles. That was one of his... Uh, videos that kind of put them on the map in terms of the angry video game nerd, but that game's not all bad. It's just incredibly difficult. Turtles 2, I think, is the best one of the series for the Nintendo. 3 is alright, but you kind of wish you are playing Turtles in time, pretty much. So, those are pretty much all the beat-em-ups that I can think of, and now we're on the final stage of Streets of Rage. And if I do say so myself, I won't give myself a lot of compliments, but hopefully I've given you enough to go on in terms of everything else throughout the video enough stuff to talk about I'm throwing out some questions to you what are some of your favorite beat em ups of all time what are your favorite memories of Streets of Rage what are your favorite uh, games that you have in your old school video game collections what are some of the games you regret missing out on what are some of the genres that you ended up 
uh, getting more of a fan of as you got older. Like I said, I really liked RPGs, didn't really like those as a kid. Loved the beat 'em ups, but once I got into Final Fantasy VII and uh, you know Legend of Zelda stuff like that, you know, it really took off. And in the PlayStation, I had a crap ton of RPGs, and I loved RPGs. I liked Parasite Eve. I loved Resident Evil, stuff like that. Resident Evil is definitely one of those ones that I would always do a let's play of. I had the initial one for the remake on the PS4. I don't know if I'm going to re-upload that anytime soon because all that stuff was taken away. But Resident Evil Zero is coming out early in 2016. So definitely then I will be doing a let's play. So you have the EA Sports Hockey League series for NHL 16 coming out. Looking forward to in mid-September. And I'll try to get a few more old school games out to you. I think the next project that I want to tackle here, if I'll have to save my voice for a few days after all this talking, is uh, Shiny Force. Shiny Force 2, especially on the Sega Genesis. Then I want to get into some Super Nintendo games, because I already did like three Sega games at that point with uh, NHL 93, Street Rage 2, and Shiny Force 2. Get into some stuff on the Super Nintendo. And some of my favorite games, maybe some of the lesser known games, but that I ended up playing a lot. And just let me know what you think about this video. If you want to see some more stuff in terms of videos like this, make a comment in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you want, dislike it, leave some comments, call me a jerk, whatever you want. Just want to get some feedback in terms of all of this stuff and let me know what you think. Because as always, I'm going to give it to you straight and let you know how I feel. That's pretty much what we're going to do on this channel. And like I said, throughout this old school classic series, I have to use the emulation in order to uh, make these videos to be able to show you. But like I said, I don't condone any of this stuff throughout the series. Pretty much I'm showing you games that I've owned, that I've played a lot, that I've played with my cousins, stuff like that. I'm not going to be showing you random games that uh, you know you don't have a piece of because like I said in this series it's really not a good idea to be going ahead and making a bunch of videos of stuff that you never owned in your life to try to go ahead and get some views because it's it's just not the right way to go about things but to each your own but to that this is what the series is going to be based off on and I hope you guys end up enjoying it the next video won't be quite as long but I figured it wouldn't be too difficult to do a full uh, playthrough of Streets of Rage 2, so I wanted to show you in its entirety of why it's one of my favorite games, and just try to get you some thoughts and feedbacks, because overall throughout the video, we talked about the history of Streets of Rage, some of my stories at the very beginning of it, if you're catching us at the end, if you want to hear a history of Streets of Rage, you go to the beginning of the video, talked about uh, 1 through 3, talked about the Streets of Rage remake, I will leave a link for you in the bottom of the comment box I will give you a link for you know to follow James and Mike on uh, Cinemassacre Alpha Omega Sin he's got a uh, video of Streets of Rage 2 as well and some of his favorite beat em ups if you like some of this stuff definitely follow his channel as well he's gonna show you some pretty cool stuff so I have a link to the game, a link to that and uh, just some of my thoughts and as we're closing on this video we're gonna be fighting Shiva Shiva is one of those players that you can actually be in the remake of the link I give you and if you have game genie codes for Streets of Rage 3 or any of that stuff you can actually play as Shiva. You can play as a amped up version of Axel Skate I believe and Ash the notoriously gay character that was taken out of the American version of Streets of Rage 3. As you've seen I've died quite a bit in terms of this final stage, but it'll end up with the same amount of lives that I had that I had, had that I started with. But I'm not really a master of the final stage, and if I had to say, especially from watching this, looking at what I need to practice on the most, it would definitely be the final stage of Streets of Rage. Two. So what'd you guys think of the video? What do you want to see more of in terms of the old school classics? What do you think is the next starting point? Like I said, I want to start uh, Shining Force 2. What are some of your favorite RPGs? All the stuff that I bounced to you. I'll leave that back in the comment box to refresh everything that we've gone through. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time. I know you probably didn't watch the whole damn video, and I don't blame you. You get through a few of that stuff just to get a view and all of that, I understand. But 
I appreciate it if you watch this whole video. If you want to see some more stuff like this, just let me know. Because uh, this is one of my favorite games of all time. And Mr. X, well, we're at the mention of it. He is another playable character in the Streets of Rage remake. And yes, his special move is the machine gun. <laughs> he's got headbutt moves. He's got all those move sets from Streets of Rage 2, so it's pretty cool. He's got running moves and all of that, so all the moves from Streets of Rage... Uh, three of the running moves, all that stuff were added. Like I said, they're all in the remake, and I'll give you a link to that as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, <clears throat> and I hope you guys look forward to everything else that's going to be on the channel as well, because I really enjoy this game.